I'd like to start by talking about a, an interesting circuit that's really a device in interesting configuration and take looking at sort of what its voltage current characteristics are. In particular, it's a straightforward PFET where I'm basically just setting the gate and I'm setting one of the source strain junctions to half a volt and the well is going to set at one volt and we're going to take this voltage here and look at it between zero and one volt. So there's a couple things that are interesting here. One of the first questions is this voltage means it will shift between there so the question is what is the source in the drain? And it turns out for the voltages that are less than half a volt this voltage actually turns out to be the drain and the current flips. And for the voltages greater than half a volt, it's the source and the currents in that direction. So I have I get in one sweep, I get all of these ideas all at once. Well, this is great because it gives me a lot of different opportunities as I work through these concepts. Okay. So now the question becomes: hmm, how do I look at this? Well, it's a PFET, and the first thing everyone wants to say with PFETs is like, I'm just going to invert all the signs and I'm good. But you have to remember to be careful with this. You have to be able to look at your devices and remember you're dealing with voltages down from the well voltage. If you don't get that right, then you can often get yourself in very strange places when you're doing your analysis. So for example, when I talk about a device sitting here, where this is sitting at um, where the sits voltages are less than half a volt. Well, V is drained, so then how do I write this? Well, for the subthreshold case, I will notice that the gate voltage is, the ga is down from the substrate voltage. So 1 volt minus 0.2 minus threshold voltage. And threshold voltage you know, is, is sort of meaning the same thing, whether it's an NFET or PFET. It has the same kind of um, characterization. Now I'm going to be talking about the source voltage, which is at or one of the terminals, which we're going to talk about as a source, in this case is half a volt, and that's down from one volt. And the same thing will be true for this one, assuming that there's be one volt minus that. And that's how you work your way through it, and then there's also the difference between the source and the drain voltages. So this becomes your sort of core equation. Now you can sort of plug in some values to kind of make this look a little more palatable. So you can see the dependence on, on the sigma side of it and sort of the element that you need in terms of saturation. So this does give you a very typical saturated subthreshold curve for a PFET. Remember for a PFET it'll typically start at wherever your um, sort of both voltages are equal and then it will have 100 millivolts come up to saturation and move across. So this is then relatively flat. Remember this is the current source region of operation which is a lot of what we often want to use for circuits, but all regions can be can potentially interesting. Um, and this is really interesting where it has almost flat but a very slow slope due to the parameters we're working with. Okay, that works well. In the reverse case, I'm taking this voltage and I'm going to bring it above half a volt. Well, again, I could write the same sort of thing, but now realizing that the main voltage term is in the source, the sigma term doesn't really matter much. And then we can kind of pull all this together and kind of put the parameters in and they get one prefactor and it looks like what? An exponential increase with voltage. Well this is really quite interesting. Um, in fact what you actually do see here is that kind of behavior. It exponentially increases. The slope is 1 over ut. Really cool. But at some point we cross the threshold current. Remember threshold current is the fundamental thing here. Right? So threshold current is what's going to define uh, where I'm going between subthreshold and above threshold. So then I get above and I get this sort of above threshold curve which gives me some kind of curve like this. Now notice that the voltage is increasing. Interesting for a PFET because if you're not used to it you're thinking wait I'm signs are negative which which numbers right? And so again this is why it's being very careful of notice that you take whereas the well voltage minus the gate voltage minus VT0 and so on. You're really careful how you work through this. And so then you can kind of see this with the parameters and away you go. You also can actually calculate what voltage that is. Again, by basically knowing where threshold will cross. Again, notice how I'm calculating this. Well based and down from that. PFETs are down from the well voltage. NFETs are up from its substrate voltage. 
Fortunately for NFETs, it's usually a crown, so you don't notice it. But for a PFET, you're definitely going to notice it. And so that's why it's a very relevant term. But the voltage, by the way, is not the threshold voltage. So very important in terms of this kind of structure that you see.